Hi everyone, it's Scott here. Welcome back to the Movie Reviewers 100, a collaboration channel that uh, me and uh, the other guys on here are very, very pleased to be a part of. Because uh, we do these themes every week. We have new, a new theme every week where we talk about movies of a particular genre by a particular director, or in this case, a particular actor. And our theme this week, of course, is Gary Oldman, one of the best actors alive today. Um, He's been in some good movies, he's been in some bad movies, but he always disappears into his part. He always really, you know, becomes a character. He doesn't have, isn't one of those actors that, you know, plays each role the same way, obviously. Very, very versatile guy. Um, it's interesting that uh, he's been in so many big hit movies lately as the good guy, because there was a period of time in which he got cast pretty much exclusively as the villain. Um, he's the type of person that can play a, you know, a good-hearted, uh, um, really solid, upstanding character or, you know, a hair-trigger psychopath. Uh, and the uh, film I'm reviewing, uh, had, his, his character definitely falls into the latter category. It's called State of Grace. Uh, came out in 1990, and it was the first Gary Oldman film that I ever saw. I'd never even heard of him before. Um, I was very interested in the movie because it's about Irish gangsters. Um, there were a few gangster movies that came out that year. Goodfellas by Scorsese, the Miller's Crossing by the Coen Brothers. Um, there was a film called The Craze about uh, identical twin uh, British gangsters, uh, starred the Kemp Brothers. That came out that year as well, at least here in the States. Um, but um, State of Grace is directed by a guy named Phil uh, Joano or Phil Jonu, something like that. I'm not really sure how to pronounce his name. His career didn't seem to go anywhere really uh, significant. Um, he did a few films, but um, seemed to um, trickle off. It was out, but seemed to trickle off. I haven't heard from him in a really long time. But I'll always admire him for making this movie because it's terrific. He is... Uh, um, a great group of actors in this. Uh, Sean Penn is the main character, Ed Harris, uh, Robin Wright, um, uh, John C. Riley has a supporting part, a um, few, other, few other good people. And, um, and uh, yeah, it's a, a terrific film. Um, Terry Noonan is the main character, played by Sean Penn. And he uh, is um, a guy who basically used to live in the area of New York City called Hell's Kitchen. He's Irish, you know, his uh, you know, friends and family are all Irish. Uh, and um, he uh, has been away for about 12 years. No one really knew who he was. So he comes back to town after he uh, gets involved in a drug deal in Brooklyn. Um, the guys try to uh, take uh, the merchandise from him without paying for it. He ends up gunning them down. And then he sort of uh, takes refuge back in his old neighborhood where he hooks up with his uh, best friend, Jackie, who's played by Gary Oldman. Jackie is just pleased as punch to see him then. He hasn't seen him in ages, doesn't know where he was, doesn't care, loves the guy, is eager to hang out with him, go drinking, go, you know, carousing uh, all night because um, his best friend is back in town. Meanwhile, Jackie's sister, Kate, played by Robin Wright, is uh, Terry's former girlfriend. When she shows up, she's surprised to see him as well. Everyone's kind of surprised to see him. Well, there's a reason why Terry's back that has nothing to do with, you know, a drug deal gone bad. Terry moved to Boston and became a police officer. And now he's back in New York City getting in with his, his old crew um, to uh, get evidence on the guy who's running the crew now. That would be Jackie and Kate's older brother, Frankie, who's played by Ed Harris. Frankie is running uh, the Irish guys uh, in New York uh, at this time. And he's on the verge of uh, closing a lucrative deal with the Italian gangsters. They will all be working together. They're all sort of going to be on the same side. And everyone's going to profit from that. Um, but the problem is, is that Frankie now has to answer to the Italians. Rather than, you know, he's the one giving orders to his own people, but he has to take orders from the Italians. And there are guys on, under his crew who don't like that very much. He doesn't like the fact that, you know, Frankie's got to, you know, answer to the Italians. Um, so Terry, uh, while he uh, talks to Frankie and Jackie about getting back with the crew and working for them and making money, he's, of course, looking for something big to bust Frankie on so they can send Frankie to prison. Um, uh, John Turturro has a small role in this part. He's uh, another cop who uh, sort of gave Terry the assignment. Um, the, the assignments you go, uh, and, and Terry doesn't want to do it, you know, he, he doesn't like getting in, involved with the people. He's, the whole reason why he moved to Boston in the first place was to get away from Jackie and all his old crew and everything like that because all they do is drink and cause trouble, you know, beat people up, extort money from them, intimidate them into their protection, as they call it. Um, and, but, but he was, you know, talked into going back there, resuming his old friendships uh, so he can get evidence on them. 
Uh, meantime, he resumes his relationship with Kate, uh, which troubles him further. Um, yeah, so he's, uh, he's pretty torn up about the whole thing right there. He's got to put on the persona of being happy to be back with everyone again uh, and um, on board with whatever it is, whatever schemes they're cooking up. But in the meantime, he's, you know, an undercover cop. Um, a couple movies about undercover cops uh, like The Departed, and there was one other one I was thinking of. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember what it was, but, you know, it's very important. Uh, they, um, they focus on the stress of having to lie to everyone and living this double life. Um, oh, yeah, Johnny Brasco. Jo my favorite Johnny Depp film is Johnny Brasco. It's kind of the same situation. He gets involved with gangsters in New York City in the 70s. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, like I said, really good cast in this movie. Um, uh, John C. Riley is uh, a friend of theirs named Stevie. It's funny the way so many of the characters' names found the same, sound the same. You've got Stevie, Terry, Jackie, and Frankie, you know. <laughs> it's kind of amusing. Um, but um, Stevie uh, owes some money uh, to some Italians, uh, and um, Terry and Jackie, it's a favor to them, rough up the Italians a little bit. So the Italians, they go to Frankie because they're supposed to be working together. They say, Frankie, we need you to take care of this problem. You know, Stevie doesn't, isn't showing us respect. He's not paying back the money he owes, etc. So Frankie takes his right-hand man, uh, played by R.D. Call, who's one of the great actors to uh, just play, you know, very intimidating tough guys. He's either playing cops or gangsters, one of the two. You know, one of those guys. Um, they take Stevie out back to the bar that he's in, and they slit his throat, um, which was a mistake. <laughs> If only Frankie had thought to maybe just pay back what Stevie owed himself and then discipline Stevie, everything would be fine. But this, he, he takes out Stevie and naturally Jackie and Terry and all the other guys in the Irish crew, they think the Italians did it. They don't realize that their boss, Frankie, took him out. So this creates a whole chain of, of trouble um, that uh, 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 Jackie is all too eager to uh, sort of... Uh, uh, exploit. You know, he, he's, he thrives on chaos. He thrives on fighting, causing trouble. Um, and, and like I said, I'd never seen Gary Oldman in any film previously. So to me, he was this character, you know. He's his he, greasy hair. He just looks like a mess throughout the whole movie. Constantly drinking uh, and, and, and getting into fights, you know. And uh, yeah, he's just, he's just a, a wild card. Just a real wild person. Um, and Gary Oldman's fantastic in this movie. Really, really fantastic. There's a lot of films that I've liked Gary Oldman in from this period. Um, uh, it was, uh, I believe, um, I want to say James. Yes, James reviewed Bram Stoker's Dracula. Um, Gary Oldman was only one of two actors that gave a good performance in that movie. Uh, him and Sadie Frost. The, the, those are the only two people I liked in that movie. Um, also, uh, uh, EJ talked about Air Force One, and I was a little uh, worried that uh, EJ was going to, you know, say Air Force One is great because I hate that movie. Uh, but luckily, EJ is uh, not totally on board with it. Uh, it is uh, a bit over the top and, and silly. Uh, so I'm glad he felt that way because I really don't like that movie very much. Um, he didn't have a great many good things to say about Gary Oldman in the movie, but I like him actually in that um, he's the Russian terrorist uh, uh, leading the uh, hijacking of Air Force One. Um, and uh, he has this great moment where uh, he's talking with the vice president, Glenn Close, over the uh, telephone. And he says, when you speak with the president, you might remind them that I'm holding his wife, his daughter, his chief of staff, his national security advisor, his classified papers, and his baseball glove. If he wants them back, and then he goes on to list his demands. It's a fun little scene. Um, but, uh, but yeah, him and William H. Macy are the only two actors I like in that movie. Glenn Close is terrible. Dean Stockwell's terrible. Uh, the first lady and the first daughter, they're both terrible, you know. Uh, and the movie itself is really, really bad. Um, so I couldn't recommend that one. However, a couple movies I could recommend, him playing Lee Harvey Oswald in JFK, for example, uh, him playing um, the uh, cop Stansfield in Leon the Professional, which Al reviewed at the beginning of the week. Uh, terrific performance from him in that. Uh, he went on to make another Luc Besson film uh, in 1997 called The Fifth Element, which he played Zorg, uh, the villain in that movie. <laughs> really, he, he did a southern accent in that one. Um, but uh, certainly one of my favorite Gary Oldman performances, aside from State of Grace, would be his two-scene part in True Romance, where he played Drexel, the pimp, uh, in, uh, in um, right, True Romance, as I said. Written by Quentin Tarantino and directed by Tony Scott. It's just, you know, a show-stopping performance. I was laughing so hard when I first 
I heard him speak. Um, he actually, I, I learned years later that he actually uh, had a friend of his who had the right accent, spoke with the right accent. He says, here, I got a tape recorder. These are my lines. Read my lines in the tape recorder and I'll just imitate you. That was, that was his uh, preparation technique. But when I first him say stuff like, pretend this is a fine, simple bitch, you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, oh my God, this is hilarious. Um, yeah, he's only in two scenes in that movie, but he's, he's so great. And he's, he's great in pretty much anything that he does. The Contender is another really good one. Yeah, he plays a, a senator, I believe, who's tussling with um, uh, uh, the uh, president, played by Jeff Bridges, over the nomination of Joan Allen to uh, vice president of the United States. Um, it's funny, he and Christian Slater aren't working together, but they're both trying to uh, discredit try, uh, Joan Allen and not get her nominated. Um, and I'm thinking this is so funny because they, Christian Slater, of course, is the main character in True Romance, and they get this huge brawl in that movie. And they were also in um, uh, Murder in the First together. Kevin Bacon is the guy in, on, uh, in prison in Alcatraz. Christian Slater's defending him, and Gary Oldman is the warden of Alcatraz, and so they're at odds in that movie as well. Uh, it kind of reminds me of Christian Slater and uh, Val Kilmer. This has nothing to do with Gary Oldman, but since Val Kilmer played Elvis in True Romance, uh, the two of them starred in a couple of movies together uh, in Mindhunters and in this direct-to-video sloppy action picture called Hard Cash. Um, they were uh, adversaries in that one, uh, Val Kilmer and Christian Slater, I mean. But it was a fun little scene in that one. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just rambling trivia right now. But of course, Gary Oldman is an actor I admire a great deal. And State of Grace is a movie, oh, I almost forgot to mention the score, Ennio Morricone, who did the score for the uh, Sergio Leone, the classic Sergio Leone uh, westerns, uh, and uh, Once Upon a Time in America, uh, and a couple of Brian De Palma movies like The Untouchables, one of the great composers of film scores, did the score for this movie as well. It's a terrific score, beautiful, beautiful score. The photography is amazing. You know, I mean, when I watched this movie again uh, this morning, it's just like, like, like coming home or something like that. You know, I just love so many scenes because I'm so familiar with it. Uh, I've seen, I used to own it on cassette for a long time, would watch it repeatedly. Uh, terrific movie, just, just really, really terrific. And, and all the actors are great, and especially Ed Harris. Ed Harris, you know, with those steely blue eyes, you know, he can glare at you and just look like, you know, you're in huge trouble. He's very intimidating, so it's a good one. Great movie. Terrific movie. Really like it a lot. Except for the last scene. The last scene is a slow-motion shootout that is a bit excessive for this type of movie. The movie is mostly very understated, except for when they get in screaming matches at each other, but... Um, yeah, I wish they'd done the end differently. Other than that, terrific movie. Um, we've got a new theme starting um, tomorrow, so please tune in for that. And please check out the other guy's uh, Gary Oldman uh, videos if you haven't already. Subscribe, please, if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next week. Later.